Hello, my Wealthy Wife family and friends. This is Ms. Sophia, author of Wealthy Wife, Meeting, Dating, and Marrying Rich Man, as well as the founder of the Wealthy Wife Academy, and of course, your godmother of affluent, rich, and wealthy romance. How are you doing today? All right. I want to start out first by saying thank you for joining me. I do appreciate you being here. For my old school G subscribers, I'm sending you chef kisses. Thank you so much. I do appreciate you so very, very much for all the time you have spent with me over the years. For my new and newer subscribers, I want to say first, welcome to the world of Wealthy Wife. And also thank you for joining us. Um, Yeah, really do appreciate you being here. For my official Wealthy Wife Goddaughters. Like I said, the active students inside the academy, ladies, oh my God, we just had a class because I have the Glamour Magic class going on right now as we speak and <laughs> I have such a wonderful, I am surrounded by, I'll say this again, I am surrounded by such amazing women. The conversations that we have, whether it's in the active master class, whether it's the class that we do throughout the month, um, I love the energy of the women that I'm working with. I love their commitment to their to their growth. I love the commitment, their commitment to personal change. I love them welcoming in the new energies and opportunities that are showing up for them. Because when you move through this world as an empowered woman, your life changes. Initially, it can be a little scary because when you become empowered, that means you're no longer allowing other people to dictate who you have to be, how you have to be, why you have to be. So there usually is a space where it feels kind of empty initially. As you learn how to now get rid of all the old garbage and now bring in the new aspects of you that actually are there to create a truly luxurious, prosperous, loving life for you. Healthy, you're healthy mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually. You move into a space of empowerment. And when the first few times, the first time you begin to feel that self-empowerment, it'll freak you out in a good way. Because you're realizing, wait a minute. This feels good. And then you will stop for a second and think, wait a minute, I let these people dominate me for how long? For what reason? No. And this is one of the reasons why I have the map do new master classes up the online master class, the arts of um the arts, mastering the arts of feminine alert, which means attraction. Who is your dark feminine energy archetype? This is why I'm doing this class. This is why this class is available online. Because I was thinking about it. Matter of fact, I just finished up the last three lessons. Um they have been loaded up onto the site. So the class, I've got like one more thing, a couple more things I want to add to it. But the main course is finished. It's available. You know, all of it's available. But as I was doing these lessons and I'm reading out the qualities, because I send like I share like 10 qualities per archetype. And then there's like worksheets and things you'll fill out to really embody and understand, you know, what the lesson covered. And I love this, by the way, because... This is something I feel is lacking sometimes is people's ability to actually go deeper to really understand what they're reading or what they're looking into because there's a ton of books on it, a ton of books on all kinds of things. But if you're not taking the time out to study the information, you're not learning anything. Now remember, ladies, I come out of a background of teaching. What you guys don't know, because I, I rarely discuss it, when I was in college, I was going to school to be a special ed teacher. Didn't start out that way. I was going into physical therapy initially, but I eventually switched my major to teaching. So even in college, I was learning a special ed because I and <sighs> I love working with different minds, different types of mind. And what I learned in that process of well, I didn't finish once again. I told you guys I didn't finish school, but I was at the stage of starting my uh, student teaching. I what I learned the most was the different learning styles. I learned that people learn differently and that what people will sometimes identify as a learning disability is not a learning disability per se. It's just that that person is unable to acquire knowledge the standard way it's taught. Remember, or your education system was basically set up by John D. Rockefeller and his buddies. And his famous statement, I'm paraphrasing him, was, I'm not looking for a bunch of uh, basically a world of independent thinkers. He needed workers. They needed workers for their businesses, for their factories, for all the stuff they were creating for the industrial age. They didn't want to encourage people to be, you know, free thinkers. They didn't want to encourage people to, you know, capitalize on what made them great at being who they were. They needed worker bees. Is what they which they created. 
That system is still in place. So what I've learned, especially now, because you have all these so-called learning disabilities, you know, the dyslexia, autism, all these different things that are going on. And what I know, because once again, I studied to be a special ed teacher. And then as what I've learned in the space of being a trainer, of being someone who used to manage businesses and worked with different types of personalities, it's not that the person is flawed. It's just that their brain is wired different. And when you take the time out to really study and allow them to study and learn in a way that actually matches up with their particular needs, they're brilliant people. Brilliant people. You have plenty of majorly successful people that would be considered autistic or on the spectrum. You have plenty of successful people that are dyslexic. I'm just saying. So I'm one who's always looking to find ways to break out of stereotypes Thus, wealthy wife, okay? Because I don't fall into any particular one. And it just makes sense. So when you understand how to love yourself, this is what we're doing. So with these archetypes, and it was so fascinating studying them. Because I said before, I study us ladies. I think about this because, you know, women are so quick to go out there. Give me wrong, I said before, I love the stuff. I love the exterior stuff. That's part of being a woman. I got a whole collection of stuff. I got the hair somewhere. I don't know where I think it's in storage. Um, I, I have different looks that I like to play periodically. I love the clothes. I love the jewelry. I love this fragrance. I love everything about being a woman. I love being a woman. But it goes beyond the physical, the exterior, the superficial. It's about the essence and energy of you being a woman. So I've been studying us all my life. From my point of view, and then learning about other women. I've studied women's history for years, decades, not even years. It's been decades I've been studying women's history. And you already know this by now if you've been following me long enough. And you'll figure it out really quickly, too, if you're, if you're new. I love eclectic women. I love women who do themselves, who literally are willing to go against the grain, are willing to step outside of social expectations, and do what's true to them. Sometimes it has great outcomes. Sometimes the outcomes may not be so fantastic. But here's the kicker. They have more great outcomes than not so great outcomes, as opposed to those who stay stuck inside the social norms. Most people in the social norms are miserable. They're unhappy. They're unfulfilled because they're not living their truth. Here at Wealthy Wife, we're about learning who you are so you can live your truth and live a life that really resonates with your desires. Unapologetic. So as I was doing these archetypes, because oh here, let me back to my thought. So I watch women, like I said, you're out there spending money on hair, nails, clothes, handbags, shoes, luxury items, all these things to 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 put up together this persona, but haven't done the work on self. And then they wonder why they keep running into these situations, personal, romantic, professional, that suck. Because what 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 educate what have you done to educate yourself on how to be a better version of you? What have you done to dig deeper? Not just read a couple books, not just watch a couple videos. I said before, there's tons of information out there on a ton of topics. Some of them are good. Some of them are just the same people saying this. Different people saying the exact same thing. That doesn't go much beyond the superficial. But what have you done to learn self? When I was doing my uh, audio, the lesson on the femme fatale, and I was laughing because, once again, she's the one right now that is, she's the it girl. I want to be a femme fatale. No. I'm like, really, people? Let me explain that femme fatale because I have a whole lesson on her. But I was laughing because how does it go? I Let me find my paperwork. It talks about how she is iconic status. The femme fatale has achieved an iconic status in our culture. She is not just a character, but a symbol a fear of desire and untamed ambition. She stands as the testament to the power of storytelling and its ability to reflect and shape societal views on femininity and power. Now, iconic status, she's symbolic representation of, of femme fatale, serves as a powerful symbol. She represents the fears and desires of a society, fear of the unknown and uncontrollable, and desire for unattainable, intriguing depths. Her representation in media reflects and influences cultural perceptions of feminine power. Now, let's think about this for a second. The femme fatale. You, you normally see her in the media. She's usually some just ambitious, cold, heartless woman, which is entirely untrue. The femme fatale, is, she's far from heartless. 
She's ambitious. That is a fact. She's going to get her way. And I would say, when, but she does it when she's mature. Now, sometimes you see the immature one, the emotionally immature that are working from a state of being traumatized. They're detrimental. But anyone who's working from a state of being overly emotional, not having emotional intelligence is problematic because they're reacting as opposed to being proactive in their options and choices. A wise femme fatale, she is a strategist. Any of the dark feminine energy I talk about, these are strategists. They know themselves. They know what they're doing. They pay attention. They study psychology. They study, they study human nature. They are masters at communication skills. This is an art. Like I said, I, I, you guys know I get so annoyed because so much of the stuff you're being taught about being a woman is so lame. How to be pretty. How to do this. How, and so much of this stuff has nothing to do with you embodying you. You want to be powerful. Like I said, the femme fatale, she, she's powerful. But she is somebody who is a self-study. The wise ones have studied themselves. They study human nature. They are unafraid to rock the boat. Matter of fact, they'll kick a hole in the boat and sink the boat. Okay? But she does it with purpose. She's not doing it because she's crazy. She's doing it because she thought about it. Because you don't want to pay attention. Okay. I'm going to get your attention. She is a strategic strategist. She understands how to influence behavior. She is persuasive. That is all of these archetypes, just so you know. But I'm using the femme fatale right now. So I was reading this and I was like going, oh. But here's the kicker. You have to be willing to study. You can't just become a femme fatale because you read a couple statements and you got a guy to buy you, you know, buy you dinner or buy you a couple of things. No, darling, that doesn't make you a femme fatale. Because once again, most women are unable to hold the energy. Because if that's energy that attracted you to the man, the man to you, you have to hold that energy. You have to become her and stay her. You can't become all sweet and fluffy later. That's deception. It is. So... That's why I did the course on these archetypes, because you're going to study and see what works for you. You're going to get into it and you're going to really understand better the qualities. You can understand better how to articulate, how to use this information to enhance your life so that you are powerful in your persona, that you are powerful in who you're drawing to you and you're wise. You're coming from a space of personal understanding and then understanding. I did the one on, these are the ones I just recorded today. They did the one with the Dark Goddess. We talk about shadow integration. You know, unlike other archetypes, the Dark Goddess does not shy away from the shadow self. She teaches the importance of integrating all parts of your psyche, including the less desirable aspects as a critical step toward wholeness, because that's also an important part of wealthy wife. It is about becoming a whole person, not just bits and pieces of you, but understanding how to honor, love, and respect all of you. The parts of you that are awesome, great, fun, light and fluffy, and the parts of you that may not be so light and fluffy. We all have aspects of darker energy within us. There is, and it's, and there's gray areas too. This is not about, you know, black and white and, you know, there's nothing, no complexities in the middle. Of course, there's complexities in the middle. We're, we're experiencing life. And through your life experiences, you develop complexity. That's why there are times I look at some of these young ladies that are sharing information on topics that they really have no real experience on yet because they haven't lived long enough. I'll say it again. Every age group has its awesome points. Every age group has its, you know, points that things need to be worked through. And if you're under the age of, I'd say sometimes 40, there are just certain things about life you just don't know yet because you haven't experienced it yet. You may have a concept about it. You may have a theory about it, but you haven't done the life experience yet. So some that I see 20 somethings talking about things that, you know, that really they don't have any profound experience on yet because they just haven't lived it. Once again, no shade being thrown. And just sometimes I look at older women that are trying to downplay younger women because of the older woman does have some bitterness because she may have wasted her younger years. And now she's pissed off at a younger woman because she is showing more emotional maturity perhaps because maybe she's watched her elders do goofy things and thought oh I'm not doing that so the younger one may have more wisdom at 20 something she doesn't have the wisdom yet of a 40 something because she hasn't done those decades yet but she's looking at her elders going no 
I just wanted to choose better. I may not know what to do just yet because once again, I don't have the experience, but I understand what I'm not going to do. So it's one of these things where you have to understand, once again, there's grace, but understand that you do need some information. You need some real, actually, you need some real meat, meat and bones, so to speak. You need some real stuff to be able to chew on. So that when you're making these decisions, you have something to fall back on. You have reference points. You have information to go back to, to study, to learn, to keep an open mind. So I say it again. Every decade of our lives has grace and beauty in it. Every decade of our lives, we have things that we will learn. And as you get older, you're going to learn hopefully what to hang on to and what to discard and continue to fly higher. And when you're younger, you're going to learn to be fearless. You're going to learn not to get yourself stuck in some of these boxes. Because I was laughing when I, what was it? Was it Lavishly Jackie talking about it? Someone was discussing how on TikTok, women didn't want to watch older women get dressed and do these different things. It was a 20-something. Some of the 20-somethings are fussing about the older women. And she was like, but she was one of the ones that was okay for people to watch because, you know, she was interesting in her 30s. And she was like, wow, ageism is a real thing. She goes, you understand the goal is to grow older, right? And she goes, and you really don't discover your personal style and really start really grasping information about self until about your 30s, like 30, 35, probably more like 35. But I loved her response because she was right. The goal is to get older. There's, you should have no fear in getting older. Only time I say getting older is problematic is if you haven't learned anything along the path. If you're still in your 40s and 50s complaining about the things you were complaining about in your 20s and your 30s, that means you didn't learn anything. That means you have not studied anything about your life. You studied nothing about how to be empowered as a woman. And 20-something, if you're fussing and complaining right now, stop. Take the time out. You you have, you have are a clean slate for the most part. You are a cleaner slate because there are some younger ones that have definitely been through some stuff. But you are a cleaner slate. You don't have just yet the stuff that you, that you will add to your repertoire of knowledge and information in your 30s and 40s because you haven't gotten there yet. You are in a space where you can learn to be a better version of yourself minus some of the drama and the trauma and not get stuck into these little boxes of trying to fit in and be accepted by people that don't even like themselves. I guess that's the part that always gets me. It's like people are trying to tell you how to be when they don't even know how to be. No, you don't get to tell me how to live my life if your life sucks. You don't get to tell me how to be if you're unhappy with what you've got. You don't get to tell me how to be if you are stuck in neutral, which doesn't exist, just so you know. There's no holding position. If you're not advancing and growing, you are literally disintegrating. You are literally disintegrating because you're going backwards. So I did this master class because in this, all oh, this information, there's this some yummy stuff. It is yummy. Talks about the domain, authority and command. The, ar the domain archetype exudes a natural authority that is both intimidating and inspiring, which I do love that aspect of that, just so you know. <laughs> Her leadership is not is, has nothing to do with brute force, okay? Nothing. Rather, it's about the calm assertiveness and confidence that guides her actions. She commands respect through her presence and decisiveness decisiveness making her a leader in whatever sphere she chooses to dominate because you already know the domina is one of my archetypes you she did we know this right has been for all my life but it's one i definitely cultivate because i love being an empowered woman from the space of knowing myself and paying attention and in the space of leadership and it has nothing to do with force i've said before if you had to force someone to do something why we want consent. We want the people that are happily and present with us doing what we ask them to do because it's going to elevate them as well as us. It talks about this too in the domain. It's going to be, this isn't a lesson. This is part of giving you guys a couple of the things that are in the lesson. Empowerment through consent. Central to the domain's philosophy is the empowerment that comes through consent. 
Unlike traditional views of dominance, the domain's power is exercised with the understanding and explicit agreement of all involved, emphasizing the ethical dimensions of power and control. You want to know what that means? Take the class. You'll find out. But it's important that you understand its mutual consent. I've said this before in audios I've done recently about the domain. About the domain and the domain. It is about consent. That's why I said before why I love so much that particular space of BDSM because you have conversations. You're not making assumptions. You have real heart-to-heart -heart conversations with individuals that you're interacting with because you want to make sure that it's going to be a situation that both of you have a desire to be part of. If it's not consent, it's abuse. No, thank you. No. And as the dominant, you are taking that so-called submissive, that person who's coming you to, for you for your guidance, and it is you, you have the chance to elevate them. And in response to that elevation, they offer you so many wonderful things, okay? But yeah, I just, I'm like, wow, this stuff is so good. Um... Next up, the dark god. Let me just give you ones I just recorded today because I just just finished these today. Um, what's again another one for the domain? What is it? What I have here? Uncompromising. Okay, okay. Uncompromising integrity, which which is also very important. Uh, integrity is a non-negotiable for the domain. She holds herself and others to the highest ethical standard, and her actions consistently reflect her deep moral convictions. This trait builds immense trust and loyalty amongst her peers and followers because once again integrity is very important unlike what they want to show you guys sometimes in the movies when they start talking about that space of oh it's this and more just you know it's very moral it's very once again it has better structures better understanding better respect of self and others in that space because once again you're conscious of what you're doing and your why and you're conscious of the individuals that are sharing that space with you and their whys master communication skills so this is this these are like just two of the archetypes that are in this course once again we have the coquette the enigma the siren the femme fatale the uh domain and the dark goddess so if you're somebody who really 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 would just love to have a better grasp on what you're doing in your wise and if you're ready to step into space and understand the energy what we call dark feminine and find out which one actually resonates with you so you can finally stop making yourself crazy trying to fit into all these spaces that you have no reason to be involved in. Over here at Wealthy Wife, like I said, my, anyone who's in there, once again, the goddaughters can share this because they know it is about you learning how to be you. And I've said this on YouTube. I've said this in class. My goal for Wealthy Wife, why Wealthy Wife came into existence is to encourage women to be self-empowered and to be inside the safe haven of a group of women who also are there to assist and encourage them. We have a blast. I kid you not. For those who are already part of, actively a part of Wealthy Wife, they know. We share information. We share wisdom. Yes, I teach. Yes, I offer information. Yes, I offer guidance. I have blueprints. I have structures in place to assist my goddaughters. I admire them. I honor them. I adore them because they are doing the work. They are devotees of the teachings of wealthy wife, so to speak. But more important, they are devotees of their self-wisdom, their self-love. So that when they move into this world, they're going in aware of what they're doing and their whys. They're not just getting pushed around by all these ideas. And, okay, today we're going to do this. Tomorrow we're going to do that. Well, we're not doing that anymore. Well, what are you thinking? No. They make decisions based upon self-awareness. And in that self-awareness becomes happiness, comes joy, comes improved health, comes improved well-being comes improved wealth and riches because once you stop falling for everything you begin to figure out what works for you so if you have not looked into this master class please do it's deep i even i'm going wow the questions that are part of it i don't have any questions in front of me right now uh the questions that are part of it they really are going to help you better learn no and love you.
And then you can invite people into your world that actually are there to elevate you and add to your happiness as opposed to steal your energy and make you feel like, ooh. So come join us. Once again, uh, if you want to take advantage of the buy now, pay here options, you need to click the link underneath the video description. It is a totally different payment on the uh, Academy page because once again, the payment, they're whatever, they're doing something totally different over there right now. But for the buy now, pay now, if you want to take advantage of that, you must click on the video link description. The description in the video, you must hit the link in the video description that will take you to the page that has the Klarna and the Affirm available for you. I would love to have you in here. Uh, you will also be part of the monthly calls that I do throughout the month, live calls I do with the Goddaughters, where we answer questions, share additional information, and you'll be in a space where you will be encouraged and elevated by, once again, a very, very lovely group of women and myself. So until we talk, have an awesome day. Bye-bye.